This video is to explain you about Lempel Ziv Welch compression, that is LZW compression. LZW is a universal lossless data compression algorithm. It was published by Welch in 1984 as an improved implementation of the LZ78 algorithm published by Lempel and Ziv in 1978. The algorithm is simple to implement and has the potential for very high throughput and hardware implementations. It is the algorithm widely used in Unix file compression utility compress and is used in the GIF image format. So why do we need compression algorithms? Uncompressed data can take up a lot of space, which is not good for the limited hard drive space and internet download speeds. While hardware gets better and cheaper, algorithms to reduce data size also help the technology evolve. One minute of uncompressed HD video can be over a GB. So how do we fit a 2 hour film in 25 GB Blu-ray disc? LZW algorithm. How so how does it work? Typically every character is stored with 8 binary bits, allowing up to 256 unique symbols for the data. This algorithm tries to extend this library to 9 to 12 bits per character. The new unique symbols are made up of combination of symbols that occurred previously in the string. It does not always compress well, especially with short diverse strings, but it is good for compressing redundant data and does not have to save the new dictionary with the data. This method can both compress and uncompress data. So let's take an example for the compression algorithm. So I want to compress the string. This is the... I've taken a small string for this example because tracing this might take some time. This is the in ASCII is 116, 104, 105 and so on what you can see on screen. It is made up of 9 bits that is 9 bytes that is 72 bits. So for tracing this algorithm we need the current element, the next element and we have to think about what we are going to output and what we are going to add to the dictionary. So first value is T and the next value is H. So we have to check if th is in the dictionary, which is not in the dictionary. So we output t and add th to the dictionary with the value of 256. The next value is h, after which comes i. We check if it's hi is in the dictionary, which is not again. So we output h and add hi to the dictionary with value 257. Next is i. s, is not in the dictionary, so we output i and add i s to the dictionary. We do it for SI also. Then after when we come to I again, the next value is S. So IS is in all IS is in the dictionary. So we have to check if IS T is. Now the current value is IS and the next value is T. IS T is not in the dictionary. So we output IS and add IS T to the dictionary this time. Again with T and H. TH is in the dictionary with the value 256. So we check if TH is, which is not in the dictionary. So we output TH and add TH to the dictionary. So after the process is done, the compressed string is made up of 8 bits instead of the original 9, which is 63 bits long instead of the original 72 bits. That's 87.5% of what it used to be. As the number of repetitions increase in the given string, the compression ratio also increases. So let's decompress this string. For decompression, we need to know the number of bytes used for the dictionary first. And for tracing of the algorithm, we need again current, next. Think about the output and what to add to the dictionary. Again, so first value is 116, next value is 104, which is not in the dictionary. So we output 116 and add 116 and 104 to the dictionary with the value of 256. And keep on doing it for the other values. Now, here comes what's interesting. 258, 256. 258 is in the dictionary with the value of 105 and 115. We output 105 and 115 and add 258, 256 to the dictionary. But here we can see we have omitted 104. 
so why have we done that so this is a weird case remember dictionary is made up with combinations of one character at a time so you would only add the first symbol of the combination to the current combination when rebuilding the dictionary this isn't very noticeable when tracing short examples but could be a serious problem to get wrong when coding now let's see where this is used lzw compression became the first widely used universal data compression method for the computers a large english text file can typically be compressed via lzw to about half its original size LZW was used in the public domain program compress which became a more or less standard utility in unix systems around 1986 it has since disappeared from many distributions both because it infringes the LZW patent and because jzip produces better compression ratios using the LZ77 based deflate algorithm but as of 2008 at least Free BSD includes both compress and uncompress as a part of distribution. Several other popular compression utilities also use LZW or closely related methods. LZW very widely used when it became part of GIF image format in 1987. It may also be used in TIFF and BDF files.